There are five layers of the atmosphere. The troposphere is the layer closest to the surface, which is the one we live in, and almost all weather takes place in this layer. It goes up to between about 9 kilometres and 17 kilometres above the Earth's surface. The height of the troposphere varies considerably. This is because warm air rises and cool air sinks. So air rises in the tropics where it is warm and falls in the poles where it is colder. This leads to the troposphere being higher at the tropics and lower at the poles. Then there is the stratosphere, which is between about 12 kilometres to 50 kilometres above the surface. In this layer, there is very little dynamical mixing and there are almost no clouds or weather events in the stratosphere. It is very stable and stratified, which is where it gets its name from. Also within the stratosphere is the ozone layer, which is a broad peak in higher ozone concentrations. Then above the stratosphere is the mesosphere from about 50 kilometres to 80 kilometres. The mesosphere is also where most meteorites burn up when they enter the atmosphere. The next layer is the thermosphere between about 80 kilometres to 700 kilometres. The lowest part of the thermosphere is also sometimes referred to separately as the ionosphere which is between about 80 and 550 kilometres above the Earth's surface. The ionosphere is a region of the atmosphere that is ionised by solar radiation, and this is where the aurora borealis is. Above the thermosphere is the exosphere, which is the final layer in the atmosphere. It is between 700 kilometres and 10,000 kilometres above the Earth's surface. The exosphere is where most of the satellites orbiting Earth are. The atoms and molecules in this layer are so far apart that they can travel hundreds of kilometres without colliding with one another. Thus, the exosphere no longer behaves like a gas and the particles constantly escape into space. At about 10,000 kilometres, the exosphere merges into the solar wind. You can think of the exosphere as where particles exit the atmosphere. There is no clear cut distinction between where the Earth's atmosphere ends and where space begins. Although the Kármán line at 100 kilometres is often referred to as the border between the atmosphere and outer space. The layers in the atmosphere are separated by pauses between the troposphere and the stratosphere is the tropopause, between the stratosphere and the mesosphere is the stratopause. Between the mesosphere and the thermosphere is the mesopause. And between the thermosphere and the exosphere is the thermopause. Because the thermopause lies at the lower boundary of the exosphere, it is also sometimes called the exobase. In general, air pressure and density decrease as you go higher up into the atmosphere and the atmosphere becomes thinner and thinner with increasing altitude. Because of this, about three quarters of the mass of the atmosphere is within the first 11 kilometres. However, temperature does not have a continuing decreasing trend. It does decrease continuously with height in the troposphere until about 11 kilometres, when there is an area of stable temperature and then when it enters the stratosphere, the temperature starts to increase again. This is due to the reactions that form the ozone layer in the stratosphere, as the formation of ozone is an exothermic reaction and so it releases heat. Then in the mesosphere, the temperature starts to decrease again. The mesosphere is the coldest place on Earth and has an average temperature of around minus 85 degrees Celsius. This trend is then reversed again in the thermosphere and the temperature starts to increase again with height. This time the increase in temperature is because the thermosphere absorbs much of the radiation the Earth receives from the Sun, which causes the small number of molecules in the thermosphere to heat up considerably. The temperature of this layer can rise as high as 1500 degrees Celsius. And so this layer is very aptly named the thermosphere. 
However, the gas molecules are so far apart that its temperature in the usual sense is not very meaningful. It would not feel hot to a human in direct contact because its density is too low to conduct a significant amount of energy to or from the skin. Then the temperature starts decreasing again in the exosphere. There is a trick to remembering what the layers of the atmosphere are called and in what order they are in. Trust me, in the exam, takes the first two letters from the name of each layer and the first three letters from the thermosphere layer. You just need to remember that the ionosphere isn't always considered a separate layer and the last two letters, the A and the M in exam, don't stand for anything. 